I actually honestly don't believe I read poetry uh, in any kind of special way, um, except when maybe I'm alone um, and um, uh, in the middle of the night. Poetry is lovely to hear by a voice which you pretend is yours, but in fact it isn't. I think our voices are different during the day. Um, the morning voice, the day voice, the evening voice, the night voice, and uh, voices that come back. That's why there is a book from which I'll read, if I may, called A Time for Voices. Because if I want to hear my father talking to me, I close my eyes in the middle of the night and we have a great chat, even though he's dead quite a few years now. Um, and I think that the voices uh, do uh, roam the universe, uh, wanting to come back, looking for an audience and talking to us. Um, the morning voice is beautiful. As a matter of fact, may I begin with a little poem about the morning. It's called Getting Up Early. I used to get up in the middle of the night and wander all over Dublin. Um, and I love also, uh, I don't do it now, because I was, I suppose, uh, you know, didn't care who I met. I remember once on a Christmas night getting out of bed and three in the morning and walking out and met a fella in a doorway and uh, he said to me, he kind of knew me I think, and he said to me, what are you doing out there? I said, I'm having a walk. And he said, Jesus, happy Christmas. <laughs> 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 anyway, getting up early promises well, a mill course on the road, induces thoughts of a sleeping world and a waking God. This hour has something sacred. Bells will be ringing soon. But now, I am content to watch the day begin to bloom. I would only waste my breath on poor superfluous words. How perfectly they sing to me, those near invisible birds who celebrate the light that spreads like love to window sills, and morning steps like a laughing girl down from the Dublin hills. Um, I love, I love listening to, to this day even listening to a horse, listening to the the horse's head. Put your head up against his head, and how he likes it. He lets you know. Anyway. Hold the horse's head, the farmer said to the boy loitering outside the pub. If you're willing to hold the horse's head, you'll earn a shilling. The boy took the reins, the farmer went inside, the boy stood near the horse's head. The horse's head was above the boy's head, the boy looked up, the sun attended the horse's head. A crown of light blinded the boy's eyes for a moment. His eyes cleared, and he saw the horse's head, eyes, ears, mane, wet nostrils, brown forehead, splashed white, nervous lips, teeth moving on the bit. The sun fussed over it, the boy stared at it. He reached up and gave the horse's head a pat. The horse's head shuddered, pulled on the reins, rasping the boy's hands, almost burning the skin, drawing blood to attention. The boy's grip tightened on the reins, jerked the horse's head to order. The boy was not afraid. He would be master of the horse's head, made of the sun in the street outside the pub where the farmer stood drinking at the bar. Daylight said the boy was praying, his head bowed before an altar, the air itself became the prayer, unsaid, shared between the boy and the horse's head. The horse's head guarded the boy, looking down from its great height. If the boy should stumble, the horse's head would bear him up, raise him as before to his human stature, 
If he should lay his head against the horse's head, peace. The farmer came out of the pub. He gave the boy a shilling. He led the horse away. The boy stared at the horse. He felt the reins in his hands, now easy, now rasping. And over his head forever, the horse's head between the earth and the sun. He put the shilling in his pocket and walked on. Somebody mentioned Patrick Kavanagh, whom um, I, I loved. I thought he was, um, he, was, he was very contrary. He would just abuse you one day and praise you the next. But he wrote that lovely poem to um, Miss, Moria, Miss Moriarty. And he cycled down to Dingle to propose to her. And uh, she said to him, will you go away or that? She said, she was a carry woman. Uh, will you go away or that? She said, Turn, cycle away from here. He said, she said, I'd never marry a poet, so they're always broke anyway. And uh, he did, he cycled back and he wrote that beautiful poem, um, Raglan Road. Yeah. I was out in Raglan Road one day and uh, I... Uh, wandered down a lane and it turned out to be a Raglan Lane and I wrote this reply to Raglan Road. Can I say the two of them to, to show what I was trying to do? Um, on Raglan Road on an autumn day I met her first and knew that her dark hair would weave a snare that I might one day rue. I saw the danger, and yet I walked along the enchanted way, and I said, let grief be a fallen leaf at the dawning of the day. In Grafton Street, November, we tripped lightly along the ledge of the deep ravine where can be seen the worth of passion's pledge. The Queen of Hearts not making tarts, and I not making hay. Oh, I loved too much, and by such, by such, is happiness thrown away. I gave her gifts of the mind, I gave her the secret sign that's known to the lovers who have known the true sound of God and stone and word and tint. I did not stint, for I gave her poems to say with her own name there and her own dark hair like clouds over fields in May. On a quiet street where old ghosts meet, I see her walking now, away from me so hurriedly. My reason must allow that I had wooed not as I should, a creature made of clay. When the angel woos the clay, he lose his wings at the dawn of day. In Raglan Lane in the gentle rain, I met dark love again. Beyond belief, beyond all grief, I knew the ancient pain. The joyful thrust of holy lust we stretched on heaven's floor. One moment burned what the years had learned, and we were wild once more. The years' deep cries in her sad eyes became a source of light. The heavy gloom and sense of doom changed to pure delight. And as we walked in joy and talked, I knew one thing for sure, that love is blessed, togetherness, and loneliness is poor. Then I grew rich with every touch, we loved the whole night long. Her midnight hair on the pillow there became an angel song. Her happy skin beyond all sin was heaven opened wide. But as the dawn came shyly on, I slept and she left my side. Why did she go? I'll never know, nor will the gentle rain. Her up and go was a cruel blow, and yet I felt no pain, for I had loved her, body and soul, in my own loving way. So I lay and thanked <coughs> the God of love at the dawning of the day. Uh, begin again to the caroling birds, to the sight of light at the window. Begin to the roar of morning traffic all along Pembroke Road. 
Every beginning is a promise, born in light and dying in dark. Determination and exaltation of springtime, flowering the way to work. Begin to the pageant of queuing girls, to the arrogant loneliness of swans in the canal, to bridges linking the past and future, old friends passing, though with us still. Begin to the loneliness that cannot end, since it, perhaps, is what makes us begin. Begin to wonder at unknown faces, at crying birds in the sudden rain, at branches stark in the willing sunlight, at seagulls foraging for bread, at couples sharing a sunny secret, alone together while making good. Though we live in a world that dreams of ending, that always seems about to give in something that will not acknowledge conclusion insists that we forever begin. Thank you for listening.